Here's a behind the scenes look at a duct exploring Tensegrity robot developed at the University of California, San Diego. Jeffrey Friesen, a third year mechanical engineering graduate student at the Jacobs School of Engineering, discusses the robot he has developed in Professor Tom Bewley's lab. This robot serves as the imagery for the second annual Contextual Robotics Forum held on October 30th, 2015 at UC San Diego. I took 143C with Tom, which is like his digital control systems course uh, where you kind of get to work with some electronics. And afterwards, he invited us to, you know, if we were interested, follow up and do a research project in his lab. So there's just some staggering statistics in terms of like how big of a problem duct cleaning and exploration is. The World Health Organization estimates Americans spend 90% of their time indoors and indoor air inherently has higher concentrations of pollutants than outdoor air and 30% of U.S. buildings experience air quality problems, which is a lot of buildings. And the Environmental Protection Agency says indoor air problems cost businesses $60 billion annually. In commercial settings, HVAC is a leading contributor to air quality problems. And then people working in buildings where HVAC has never been cleaned are 60% more likely to develop respiratory ailments. So I think that those statistics alone really are like the key drivers of why we need a, a duct exploration robot. And so there's actually already, I mean, they exist, but they're typically just like little RC cars with a brush mounted to them. And so obviously, you know, the majority of these duct systems are inaccessible to humans or if you want to access them you're gonna to have to go take apart your roof and uh, like unscrew them and, and etc and so it would be just be really awesome if you know instead of having to like shut down the system and take apart the ceiling and take out all the duct and clean it out if you could just deploy a little remote system to just go in there it's very like low profile so you don't necessarily need to shut down the system when you go to clean it initially i think one student tried to build kind of a robot inspired by a spider. And so it had many of these long limbs. And the idea was, right, you could stretch out these limbs and climb through the duct like a spider. Um, so he built it kind of with traditional robotic techniques, you know, rigid limbs. Each one had one motor, and it would kind of rotate around. And then, you, in theory, you could climb up the duct. But the problem was, you know, because you're climbing, it's kind of a problem like, when you're building a rocket ship where you're like, oh, okay, well, we need to get this much mass off the ground, so let's put this much fuel, but then you add the fuel, then the rocket gets heavier, so then you need more fuel to lift the fuel that you added. And so the way that they built this legged robot, it was kind of a chicken and the egg problem where they kept having to use bigger actuators and then the robot would get heavier and then they would need bigger limbs and bigger. So um, the robot just ended up being like, uh, it was like, 15 pounds and it could only climb at like a three degree incline or something so it never really like came to fruition and so in a, in a different series of events um, Tassin Lazuni uh, had just recently met with this guy Vita Sun Spiral who's up at NASA Ames Research Center um, who was really excited about um, this new kind of robotics that had been emerging called Tensegrity Robotics which is essentially it's kind of like Tensegrity inspired robotics really and then Tom tapped me and then, then that's how like the collaboration started. And so Tom said, hey, these robots are nice and mass efficient, they're compliant. That could be a good spot, duck climbing could be a good spot to apply these principles of Tensegrity Robotics. So why don't you think about that and um, get started on this project and really reimagine how we're going to build this duck climbing robot. And that's kind of the story of how duck came about, I guess. The idea is you can build these structures with only rigid straight elements and cables and actuate the cables and get a moving robotic system that has a lot of beneficial properties that uh, people look for when they're building robots, such as mass efficiency. It's inherently compliant, so you don't have to worry about building complicated series compliant actuators. And you get good force distribution throughout the system. This is the second revision of the duct climbing prototype. So in the first prototype, we used kind of aluminum for the tubes and then everything was interconnected with 3D printed parts. And we dropped that prototype one time and it pretty much shattered. And that was like, you know, months of work down the drain. So um, this next prototype, we took a lot of care in figuring out how to interconnect everything using, you know, aluminum or, um, or carbon fiber at all the joints. And we still utilize kind of the convenience of 3D printing, but we use it in such a way that only the only parts that are 3D printed aren't directly passing 
things like you know, uh, like large loads or etc. So um, we use them for like spacers and stuff if we 3D print stuff or cases, cases or just holding batteries or something. So so the primarily structure of the robot is all machined from aluminum right now. I'm actually replacing all the vertical tubes with carbon fiber right now, and that will reduce the weight of the robot about 10%. So. Pretty much in all aspects, you can just neglect the weight of the cable because they're just so light. They're so mass efficient. Um, I think our cables are like a tenth of a millimeter in diameter, um, and they can hold 300 pounds or something. So you can get very, very, very strong cables that can un like hold insane loads, and they don't weigh anything, and they're very thin and don't stretch. Yeah. So we typically use some. Uh, some type of high density polyethylene cable. So whether it be Vectran, which is actually developed at NASA for space applications, there's also Spectrofiber, Dyneema, um, there's a whole slew of them, but they're all really strong, low friction and sliding, uh, lots of good characteristics for cable driven robots. And, and, a, and a lot of that we actually got from, if you look at any robotic hand, right, you need to have all the actuation mm -hmm. um, remotely located in the wrist. Yeah, so the robot's fully untethered. There's no, um, there's no power source required. It's you can charge it without removing the batteries. So you just plug right in, and you can charge it up in two hours. So it's yeah, it's fully wireless. It can run for uh, about six hours continuously. I would say one really exciting thing about being here is that you can see. There's a big administrative push right now to, to get a lot of new faculty in the robotics department, which you don't always see at every other university. And I think uh, it's just been really exciting to see them bring on new staff and really they're committed to uh, kind of developing the robotics department here, and bringing new people in with a lot of new knowledge, young people, young professors that are really excited and ready you know, to fill out you know, grant applications and get funding in and, and make a lot of new exciting progress for, for uh, the robotics field in general. And I think uh, it's going to be, and as the years progress, it's only going to get better uh, where there's just going to be a lot of innovative research coming out of this university, I think. So it's been exciting to see that growth.